All right, let's get going. So we're gonna just start out with some breathing because breathing helps us to connect to our movement and to our own body. And if at any time you need to go back to your breath, do so. Don't be afraid, you're just stop. Put your tongue against the roof of your mouth and breathe dynamically through your abdomen. So we get tended to get strapped up into our shoulders, into kind of breathing up here. And I want you to feel the filling of your body as you take your breath deep into your body. So place your hands on your belly. Put your tongue against the roof of your mouth and allow yourself to breathe through your nose and expand the walls of your rib cage, expand the walls of your belly, expand into your back. We'll do two more big deep breaths here. And then we're just gonna drop our chin to our sternum and bring your chin up towards the sky. So the idea is always that you are moving at your place, not what I'm doing, not what you think you should be doing, but you are moving where you're at today and what is available to you today and then, not, and then not worry about tomorrow and not worry about what you were able to do yesterday. And then we're gonna turn our head. Move with your eyes first and look over your left shoulder and then over your right shoulder. And again, you're not trying to go as far as you can, but I'll be go as far as you need to, to let that head turn right and left. And I'm gonna add a movement in with your back leg. So as you turn to the right, lift your left heel. As you turn to the left, lift your right heel. And allow yourself to rotate in the hips, not just the spine. Make sure you're still breathing with the tongue against the roof of that mouth. And then we're gonna move this move a little bit quicker. So we're gonna take your arms around your midline and just let them hit your side. Kind of like one of those dolls or things do with your hands and spin it around or your arms are like noodles and just don't try to control them too much. Just let your hands hit your sides. Keep your sternum nice and tall. Open that chest, open your back with your breath. So even though I'm talking through this, I want you to really focus in on your breathing. If you stop breathing, that's a sign that really you're moving a little bit faster than maybe you need to for this. And also that maybe that's the end point of your ability to control your respirations real with a good efficiency. Do two more to each side and last one. Good, bring your hands forward and back. Just kind of clap forward and back. Allow the chest to open, the shoulders to pull back. You're just warming up those shoulders. Back, chest. Do 10 more. Nine, eight, seven. Four more, three, two, and last one. So we're gonna do a right hand to left knee and left hand to right knee. So for some of you, this is gonna seem like an old fashioned kind of an aerobics move. The idea here is that it's mimicking crawling. Crawling is our most basic movement pattern other than just lifting our head or breathing. And it brings us back to our right arm working with our left leg. So ideally you could move just your arms and legs in a kind of a walking pattern. And that's the most fundamental pattern that you have that's only designed in your body for humans. You were designed to move, you were designed to move well, and you were designed to move your entire life. Let's do five more, four, three, two more, and last one. Good, so we're gonna touch the ground and touch the sky. Touch the ground and touch the sky. This is called a full body extension. As you come up onto your toes, reach up, and down, reach up and down. See if you can lift up onto the ball of the feet, touch the ground, see how long you can stay up those toes without just falling back down. Control your movement and down, do four more, 
and three, and two, and last one, all the way up and down. So we're gonna just step from side to side. This nice even stepping from side to side, just evenly puts the hips work. Move your right arm with your left leg. So as my right foot comes in, my right arm is coming in too. Do five more. We're gonna bring it up to what's called a speed skater. Three, two, see if you can hop from foot to foot without putting the trailing leg on the ground. Try to keep swinging those arms. Think of Antonio Ono, Anton Antonio Paulo, Paulo Anton Ono. There we go. Do five more, four more, three more, two, and last one, each arm and leg. And then let's come back to cross crawls. 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, we're gonna do what's called a lunge matrix. So you're gonna do, think of a clock. 12 o'clock is out in front, then you've got three o'clock, six o'clock, six o'clock is still behind you and nine o'clock. So we're gonna start with your left, your left leg, my right, start with your left leg to 12, go to the outside, step back, other leg steps back, step to the side, and then step front. That's one time around. You've got three more times. Run to the side, back behind, other leg behind, to the side, and forward. Two more times, forward, side, back, back again, to the side, and forward. And again, forward, to the back, to the side, to the back, again, back, to the side, and forward. We're gonna go the other direction. So you're gonna lead with the, se with the second leg ascent. So forward, to the side again. We're doing five rounds, back and back, sideways and front, front again. Good, back around, this is time two. And back, back and side, forward again. And this is round three, to the side and back, back again. Again, to the side, all the way front, and one more, oops, one more time, you gotta go front again, this is four, and side, back again, back again, to the side, we're almost to the last round of this, and one more time around, right leg, right leg, right leg, unless you're doing left, and out, one more time forward, and let's go back to those cross crawls. One nice thing about those cross crawls is they help to bring everything back into the center and slow you back down. But at the same way, it's very active. Do five more, four more. See if you can keep your tongue on the roof of your mouth. Breathe through your nose. Two more, last ones, each leg. Good, go ahead and pause. And we're gonna come to the ground. Come all the way to the ground. Hopefully you have a mat, so you're not just knees to the floor. If you need them, best practice really, is if you only have one mat and it's relatively thin, fold it up just enough so your knees can be on it. Your toes will take care of themselves and maybe your hands can be on it. But don't worry too much about your whole body needing the mat. And so also if you have shoes on, that's great. If you wanna take your shoes off, that's great as well. So let's start with our hands out in front. And we're gonna do an, what's called a knees rocking. You're just gonna shift those hips back and forward. Let those hips go back towards those heels. Now for some, this is, a, this is an interesting move because this is a lot of work for their knees. Maybe because there's just haven't been a lot of movement in that way. 
So I want you to think of doing what you can really specifically, going as far as you can, doing as much as you're able to do, and don't worry about how big your range is. Just meet yourself where you are today. You know, the beautiful thing about this is that what God does with us every single day. He just meets us where we are. We come to him. He provides us with what we need. Psalm 68, 19 says he daily bears our burdens. And you can go moment by moment. Even Ecclesiastes says there's a time for all of this. And allow yourself to just be in the time that you need to be. Two more and last one. So we're going to take it down to what's called a commando rocking. So your forearms are on the ground and you're going to shift forward and back on your forearms. On your forearms, you get a little more stretch in your triceps, the muscles that are on the back side of the upper arm. Those muscles of the triceps are super important for the stability of the shoulder, as well as really making your arm look more nice. More nice is proper English. Ask Jennifer. She are as the corrector of all English things. Do two more and last one. Now we're gonna alternate. So you're gonna come in to a, on your hands and then go back on your forearms. Rock up to your hands, rock forward on your forearms. Just bend those elbows to the ground and then come forward. You've got five more and forward. Three, again, you're trying to breathe through your nose with the tongue against the roof of your mouth. Two more. And last ones. And down, good. So we're coming up, hands and knees. We're gonna do what's called a bird dog. A bird dog is kind of what it sounds like. It's like a movement a bird dog would make, kind of like in a cartoon. And you're gonna be on your hands and knees. Right arm is gonna reach out with left leg and then down. And then left arm with right leg. Right arm with left and left arm with right. Ideally, you move as best as you can. You wanna strive for a little bit of making sure the knees and elbows straighten as best you can. And pausing at the end points. If you point your toe, that's fine. That's one motion. If you flex your foot, that's fine. But notice if you're always doing one or the other. Two more. And last one, each arm. Now we're gonna take the same movement back to what's called a skier. The skier, the arm goes back with the leg. You can even make a swoosh, swoosh, swoosh sound or you don't have to. Two more. And last one, each arm and leg. Good, go ahead and pause. Let's bring our weight back and let's sit back onto our hips. I'm just moving my mat, I bent it over so I can have it for my knees. And your feet are gonna be out in front of you. So I'm just kind of off center. I want your knees to drop right and left. Let those knees move, kind of like windshield wipers. Right and left, right and left. So if your feet are real close, that is one way to do this. But if you can get some range, some motion, look at this position that's here. I know it seems weird and awkward, but it's like a squat. And then I'm taking that squat to the side and really getting my hips to open up. So for most people, it's not that their knees can't do a squat. Yes, your knees hurt sometimes when you do a squat, but it's because your ankles and your hips are saying, no bueno, I don't wanna do that. So if we can open the hips and the ankles, the knees don't have to do all the work for the squat. Two more, right, and again, right, good. And then hold back to center. Let's lay all the way back on the mat on our back. Head back, arms down, and we're gonna do that windshield wiper on our back. Just let those knees drop from side to side. So a lot of times the other part of our movement patterns that get disrupted is our posture. As we get older, or maybe you are eight years old and your mom said, stand up straight. But in reality, repulsive posture is reflexive to our life and our lifestyle. 
And so just standing up straight every now and again when someone yells at you doesn't necessarily improve your posture. And so what you need to do is do stuff where other parts of your body can release. Like your ribs need to release. Yes, your ribs can move about 22 degrees in each direction and they get locked down because we don't breathe into them. Open your arms wider, pick your knees up and then take your legs right to left. So now you're bringing your knees into your chest. Try to keep the outside arm down as you rotate. Now, ideally here, you want to keep your tailbone slightly lifted so you're not letting your back arch and you're not letting your legs hang on your lower back. So keep those knees into your chest with your tailbone slightly tucked in towards your face. Watch that the shoulders don't lift up, only go as far as you can keep the shoulders on the ground. But if you can get those legs to the ground, not a lot of and pumping to get your legs back up, then great. Nice and slow, nice and even motion. Feel that movement right and left. Bring those knees up again. And now we're gonna do what's called a dead bug, or some people refer to it as a dying bug. Start with your hands touching your knees. You're gonna think about what you're not doing more than what you're doing. So I want you to let go of those knees. I want you to make a fist with your right hand and tighten up kind of your left leg. And I only want you to move your left hand and your right leg. So don't move at all. And I want you to think about that right hand and left knee. Don't move that arm and leg and just move your left arm and right leg, your opposite sides. So remember opposites is walking. You walk right arm and left leg. Two more. If this makes you dizzy at all to lay back on your back, you can always have your head up on something. Get a pillow or something. And then we're gonna pause and then tighten up your left fist and only gonna move now your right arm and left leg. We're just switching to one side Focus in on the arm and the leg that aren't moving and just allow that right arm and left leg to fall back and down and back up. You might be able to feel the muscles of the abdomen pull and kind of contract as the leg and arm move away from it. Again, that's walking. Now we're gonna alternate. So you're gonna take your right arm over your head and then your left arm Arm, right arm and left knee, left arm and right knee. Try to focus on what's not moving just for a moment so you can allow the other side to move. Right arm and left, left arm and right. One more time each side and last ones. Good. Bring your knees into your chest as best you can. Roll yourself up and let's come on to our stomach. I'm just gonna move my mat more like a T so it's easier for me to be on my stomach. Lay on your stomach, you're facing me. Body's nice and tall, kind of like what's called a TV watching position. So in a TV watching position, you're in an extended position. If this is too high for you, widen out your arms and bring yourself lower. You can go all the way down till your head is on your hands, or you can come up as high as is comfortable. So from here, we're just gonna nod the head, drop the chin to the sternum, lift the chin up. Remember, the tongue is at the roof of the mouth and the mouth is closed so you can breathe into the diaphragm. The diaphragm pulls away from the head as you breathe and actually exercises the organs. Yep, everything gets to exercise. One more. And then you're gonna bring your hands together, elbows wider if you can, look over your right shoulder, look over your left, right, and left, right and left. Couple more, look way over. Look with your eyes towards the sky and around. Look with your eyes to the sky or ceiling and around. Look up, feel that stretch in the belly, feel that lengthening in the back. 
You don't look so high that you're in pain. There's no reason to move into pain. Pillars of movement are breathing, eye and head movements, and opposite arm and leg movements. So you've got breathing, movements of the head, and then movements of the body in opposition. One more time, head is forward and back. Let's move back onto your hands and knees. Sit your butt back as far back, curl your toes under, and we're gonna begin to do that knees rocking again. Keep that head and chest step. Two more. And last one. Good, sink back into your butt. You're gonna take your left hand or your right and you're gonna open up. Keep your opposite hand on the ground, pushing into the ground as you reach up. So don't just let your hand hang back here. Think of where your arm is going and pause. Instead of getting slack, reach in two directions, hand to hand. Look down, hand comes down. Look away and look up. Look down and bring your hand down. Look up and reach up. Look down, hand down. Again, as best you can, breathing in through your nose, tongue against the roof of your mouth. One or two more times, each side. Last time here for me on each side. And then down. Good, walk your hands back towards your knees as best you can, roll yourself back up into a ball and let's go ahead and stand all the way up. So you're back to where we kind of started. We're gonna go back to that cross crawl again. Everything comes back to walking. Your best movement pattern to help your body, if you could do any two things, people ask me, what movements should I do? I say, breathe, learn how to breathe and walk. Don't walk necessarily with somebody. Don't try to walk to music. Just try to walk as slow as you comfortably can or as fast as you comfortably can with your tongue against the roof of your mouth, mouth closed, breathing through your rib wall, and you're gonna feel your body wanna reconnect to itself. Do four more, three, two. Let's rotate around the torso again like we did at the beginning. Rotate, let those arms swing as best you can. Let the head lead. And then come forward. Once more, you may notice those shoulders feel a little bit more mobile, a little bit more at ease coming forward and back. Do five more, four, three, two, and last one. Good, go ahead and pause. Place your hands on your belly again. Tongue against the roof of your mouth like you're swallowing. Big deep breaths, look up just with your eyes. Look down just with your eyes. Look to your left, your left. Look to your right just with your eyes. Look all the way around. Pause in the center. Look all the way around. Take your arms up over your head. Take your arms back down by your side. And we are done and done. Very nice, you guys. So movement doesn't have to be difficult. Movement is how we were designed. So allow yourself to come to any movement that you do with the idea and perception that it's not about what somebody else can do or about what you think you should be able to do or what you were told you were supposed to do and allow yourself to be present in your own body as you need to. Have a fantastic Zoomerific kind of day. I will see you another day and be well in yourself because it is well with your soul. Have a great day guys. Bye. You can come back any day or hey Dave. Bye, Susie.